Hello gamers, welcome back or in case you are new here, I'm NKZL and in this video I will be talking about Perfect New World and what it has to offer. After hearing about it, I would like you to let me know what you think of this title. Does it have potential to be fun? Would you be interested in playing it when it comes out? Perfect New World is an upcoming MMORPG and it is the spiritual successor of Perfect World, an MMO from mid-2000s. Perfect New World is currently having a test and there are quite a few things they are showcasing. That being said, the game is in the middle of development, so a vast majority of things that I will be talking about and show are unpolished and unfinished, so please be mindful of that. These things might and should change in the future. While the next thing might not mean much to most gamers, the Chinese project lead did display a passion for the project and desire to interact with the Western audience, even with his bad English, which is fairly rare from Eastern developers. For me, this was the reason why I decided to follow the project and to at least give them the benefit of checking their game out, despite me having a lot of other MMOs that I am much more interested in. This in no way means that the game will be good or popular, but it got me to check it out and that is something that I would not have done otherwise. Alright, so let's get into it. The first thing you will experience is the character creator. The facial options are varied and they offer decent customization options, however, the rest of the character creator does feel limited. It has very few options when it comes to hair, facial hair, body options and tattoos, having only between 5 and 10 options each. However, they did make sure to include breast and butt options for the lonely gamers out there. I hope they will offer more options as development progresses. In my opinion, the character creator is just acceptable and nothing exceptional. And I believe in today's day and age, they need to offer more to compete in this market, especially when character creators like the one found in Black Desert exist for so many years. But in all honesty, the industry as a whole needs to step up their game. There are three races in Perfect World, Human, Elf and Mystic. I'm sure you can imagine what the first two look like, as for the mystic, it is a beast race. Males are humanoid animals, while the females are human females with animal ears and tails. So, not only do they cater to the lonely gamers out there, but they also have something for the furries. Jokes aside, it's nice to see an MMO with more race options. Lately, we have been getting only human characters in MMOs. I think it's pretty boring and it's only being done because it saves development resources. And in my opinion, it is one of those elements that cheapen the game. However, for me personally, the big negative here is that the game is gender, race and class locked, meaning each class will have a specific gender and race and there is no changing that at least for now. The game has 4 classes to test at this time, with more to come in the future. The current classes are male human swordsman and spearman, female elf assassin and male mystic berserker. Surprisingly, there are more male classes than female classes, which is very rare to see in gaming, especially in eastern games. Personally, I hope they remove at least the gender lock, if nothing else and I believe if they move forward with this limiting system, it needs to offer vastly more variety. I would say that the game needs at least 12 classes in that case. After you make your character, the game throws you into the story. The start is fairly decent, but it kinda goes down after the first two cutscenes. The story is just mediocre, and while a mediocre story can be elevated with excellent cutscenes, voice acting, facial expressions and animations, it is not the case here, or at least not yet. The facial expressions for NPCs are not good or not present at all. Often enough the voice acting and their animations are mismatched. The voice acting is just mediocre and while there are no obvious translation errors, the NPCs do say some things in a weird way. This is most definitely not the worst I have seen and since the whole game is clearly in a state of development, I hope that it will improve. I do not believe this will end up being one of the best stories or anything like that, but I do hope they make it a decent experience and, at the very least, it should not be something that drags the game down. The next element we should talk about is combat. 
the game features what they call action combat, but it also has a lock-on function, similar to something like Dark Souls, where you can lock on a target and the camera and your character will try to follow the target around. The combat is combo based and you weave in skills in between combos, kinda like in a fighter game that would also have an action bar. It kinda reminds me of Blade and Soul. There are a variety of effects, different levels of super armor, various types of crowd control, the ability to dodge and block. Something that I believe will be seen as a negative by the majority is that this combat is extremely skill intensive and complex. The skill ceiling is ridiculously high and it might just have too many things going on at the same time, which might be a detriment to the average player that might not be willing to put in hundreds of hours to become proficient. Because it's so similar to a fighting game, Pressing the right keys at the proper moment is extremely important, so servers and your internet connection will have to be top quality. For me personally, the combat is not yet as smooth as I would like. This will be something that others might even like, but for me being stuck in animations is not good, it feels terrible. I find Dark Souls games unsufferable because of this, and this is my personal opinion. If you like being stuck in animations, that is also fine, and you will probably enjoy the combat as it is right now. But from my point of view, this is a game with a lot of mobility, and it simply feels terrible if the enemy you are fighting moves out of your range while you are stuck in the animation and there is nothing you can do about it. The way Black Desert deals with this is by providing quite a few skills that will animation cancel and I strongly believe this is exactly what the game needs. That being said, I can really appreciate what they are trying to do here and it piqued my interest and curiosity. They are trying something kinda new, something different than the copy-paste formula. And as someone that played a lot of games, I do appreciate when developers have original thoughts rather than just copying whatever is successful. Related to combat, they also have a talent system that alters how some skills perform. A skill leveling system that requires some items obtained in game, a gear upgrade system and RNG enhancing. I'm fairly certain that the RNG enhancing system will be a sore spot for some gamers. So, if you don't like RNG systems, this might not be the game for you. As it is customary with Eastern games, the game has a lot of systems. It has basic fishing, gathering and crafting, and while these are fairly basic, the gathering procs some minigames from time to time. It also features mounts, pets, flying and fast travel. Personally, I quite like having accessibility options in my games. I know from my experience with New World that there are those that have an irrational hate for anything that doesn't waste their time. And for those gamers, all I can say is that you can always choose not to use these options if they bother you. Nobody is forcing you to mount up or to use fast travel, or at least I hope that nobody is being held at gunpoint and forced to use these systems against their will. The game also has costumes, both obtained in-game, and I assume there will be some in the cash shop as well. These costumes will also be diable. Alright, with all the basics out of the way, let's take a look at what you can actually do in this world. Of course, you will be following the main quest, and that is how you will unlock new zones. But after that, you will be able to do some exploration, and I was pleasantly surprised by the amount of exploration elements these zones have. There are things to collect, minigames, dynamic events, even field and world boss challenges that require multiple players. You might encounter a carriage that has been attacked by monsters or a group of bandits traveling the land. There are also various camps that sometimes have even stronger monsters that will be a challenge at the appropriate level. One element that I have not seen very often in MMOs are smaller settlements that you need to unlock. This will be a small dungeon type challenge and after completing it, that settlement will have NPCs and shops and stuff like that available to you. Overall, when it comes to world exploration, I think they did a great job. But let's talk about the content that everyone is more interested in, and that is the main PV and PvP content. 
For PvE, there will be dungeons, both group and solo, there are bounties and trials, which are a variety of activities from minigames and jumping puzzles to wave defense and mini dungeons, and there are even guild activities. The guilds in this game are not only for decoration, they have guild bases and you have guild activities related to this. As for PvP, there are solo and duo arenas, and they even have a battleground, with probably more to come in the future. When talking about content, I think it's not very important to dwell on the specifics of each of these activities, because I think overall they are good and well designed, and it's really nice to see a lot of variety in potential activities. However, the way we experience most of these activities is based on the combat, and as I mentioned earlier, I believe the combat needs to be improved. The next element that I should talk about, and I feel this one is particularly bad, is the user interface. Maybe not all the UI, but certain elements of it. Certain elements feel very disconnected from the game, like the text above friends and enemies. To me, it just feels like it does not belong, and it looks pretty bad. There are a few other elements of the UI that just don't feel right, and some of them that aren't as clear as they should be, like skill descriptions. I do believe some of these elements are placeholders, and I hope they will be improved moving forward. Graphics and visuals in general are decent, nothing outstanding, but you will not feel like you are playing a 10 year old game. What I quite liked is that despite being a game based on Chinese lore, the armors and in general the aesthetics of the game are much better than the typical Chinese game. The devs didn't just throw bat robes on everyone and call it a day. The last thing I should probably mention is monetization. The game will most likely be free to play and will have a cash shop and even a battle pass, pretty standard stuff in today's day and age. There did not seem to be a need for convenience items, for example, inventory expansion is done with in-game gold, and you get a pet through questing, and so on. That is a positive in my books. What I am almost certain is that just like all MMORPGs, it will be pay to win. But because of the RNG enhancing, it might end up being quite heavy on the pay to win elements, or extremely grindy. But this will be something to be seen at release. However, we should be aware that this is most likely going to be the case. In conclusion, I think Perfect New World has potential to be a good MMO. It does a lot of things right, and there could potentially be a game to enjoy here. It is still in development, and it needs a decent amount of work before it can be released. It needs more options in the character creator, it needs more classes, and the combat needs to be made much smoother. The story elements would need to be looked at and improved to offer a better experience. The game overall desperately needs more polish and optimization before it gets released. Realistically, even if they improve all that, I do not think it will be a massive success on the western market. I hope I am wrong, because I never want to see games do badly, but I do believe there is only a niche audience that looks at Chinese games and they need to be outstanding to retain that audience. I also think this will be made even harder by some of the upcoming MMORPGs, which personally I am more hyped about and I am sure others are too, like for example Throne and Liberty. That being said, I think this MMO has some solid elements, and it might potentially be a fun game, even if it will not be popular. Personally, I don't care much about what the majority of people do, I never base my opinion or enjoyment on others, because to me that is a sure way to never enjoy anything. Of course, an MMORPG needs a stable population to be enjoyable, so if they manage to get that, and if they fix the problems I have with the game, I will be sure to play it for as long as it is going to be fun. Now, I guess it is your turn. Feel free to let me know if this sounds like something that you would want to play, or at least check out when it releases. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Subscribe and like and all that jazz if you feel like it. See you in the next one, gamers.